the button. That means we are about to begin a brand new episode of the Bid Nerds. Welcome, everybody. It is a fantastic Thursday on the Las Vegas Strip. My name is John Polnick, and you have found the Bid Nerds. I'm your host, along with my partner, Michael Deep, coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area. This is your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars on Cars and Bids and Bring a Trailer and soon to be about 20 other auction sites. Uh, you yeah. know, we, we might talk about that a little bit. Uh, everybody's getting into the auction game, uh, but we, Michael Deeb and I, have a little auction game of our own. We have a little action between one another. Uh, this channel, we talk about the cars that come up on these uh, auction sites. We talk about what's interesting about them, what makes them cool, what makes them not cool, what we think they're worth, and we even make predictions about what these cars will hammer for when they hit the auction block and sometimes we're better at it than others <laughs> uh yesterday we talked about five cars and uh michael yeah. deeb how'd it go yesterday oh yeah don't call it a comeback yet yeah, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the empire strikes back so okay uh, i got the better of you yesterday but just the one car it wasn't a complete flush but uh it was really interesting there were there were there was at least one interesting thing with the Toyota MR2, um, but uh, maybe we'll start right away with our star car, the 1991 Mazda Miata. This was the uh, British Racing Green Special Edition with just 18,000 miles, mm. and um, I bet 17,000 on that car. You bet the over, which was interesting, and uh, at 18, and this car sold for just $15,500, um, which is, you know, it's so funny how sometimes you say, like, you know, the, the, where, where we're looking at the car, Michael, that's all the money anybody's ever spent on a used Miata in this day mm -hmm. and age. And then you bet the over and it literally goes kind of to where it like you had narrated. So it's funny <laughs> how sometimes you don't we as as bidders don't take our own advice. Um, uh, then from the top, we jumped over to cars and bids and we looked at this uh, really beautiful Porsche Cayenne Turbo. And uh, I, I really believed in this car. I thought it was going to bring 24000 You bet 23000 And at $22,750, this car only got like a couple of three or four bids at the end of auction. That was your first win of the day. Um, then we looked at this incredible Mercedes, this restored 1971 Mercedes 280 SE, a 3.5 with just a stunning restoration on this car. Um, I believed in it big time. I went one hundred and eighty-one thousand dollars. You stayed soft on the car and went one fifty-nine. If you had re reversed your five and nine, you would have went because it <laughs> sold for one hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars, uh, wow. and and that was that was a very long close of auction. I mean, that car brought like another. Oh man, it was at like one twenty or something when we were looking at it. It it, it took like twenty-five minutes to close that auction because wow. they just put another. $70,000 on the, on the thing. It had met the reserve, um, you know, before it even closed. So it was crazy before it even got to close. It was really, it was really interesting. Um, uh, the, the one that was really strange was this 1991 Toyota MR2. So anyway, car was sitting at $9,900 JP. If you remember, it only had three bids and I was telling you how I preferred the Miata. And I said, I'll go 12,000. And you said, Oh, if you drive the MR2, you'll love it. I'm going to go 15,000 was your uh, was your take on the car. That car did not receive another bid. It actually closed and failed to sell at $9,999. So when I said to you, there's something weird about this car, I still yeah. don't know what it was, but um, clearly the audience agreed with me because on Bring a Trailer, this 100,000-mile uh, MR2 didn't go anywhere. Um, so that's yeah, a, that's a that weird one. Yeah, that is just an absolute shock to me because that is just such a cool car um i suspect it's the florida thing that's the only that's the only thing i could think of that, that was holding this car back but i don't know yeah. whatever uh, yeah uh there were some comments on you know we got some feedback and comments on uh the youtube channel where people also agreed with me that you're crazy this car is awesome yeah and uh i think michael deeb needs to own an mr2 in the future i'm excited yeah, about yeah, yeah. I'm making that happen probably not high on my <laughs> list okay and then and uh, the last car of the day was an interesting one. Uh, the Lotus Evora 400 had some mods, uh, kind of a cool car with just like 8,000 miles on it. Um, manual transmission. You and I both agree that if we drove one of these things, we'd be like, oh, it's awesome. Mm. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's kind of, it, it, it just, it's hard for your eyes to make out what it is. So anyway, I said 78, you said 76. The car sold for about $71,000. So um, 
Yeah, I think I think we you know we both agree it kind of has a an identity crisis, and we'd sure love to see this powertrain wrapped in uh, the body of a like a, a Alpha Four C or something like that. Yeah. Uh, something something that's uh, a body style that just has a little bit more lust behind it. This one just right. seems very wind tunnel kind of exacting and not very interesting. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So yeah. All there right. you go. There you go. All right. Well, so that was yesterday's cars. Uh, Michael and I were pretty close uh, as per usual. I mean, that's the way it usually winds up. Sometimes he'll have a good day. Sometimes I'll have a good day. And then by the end of the week, we wind up catching up with one another. Um, yeah. But uh, we really want you guys to play along. You know, tell us when we, you know, we're going to put the links to all the cars that we talk about today uh, in the information area below the video. So you can follow along. You can go and look at the ads and see the cars that we're going to talk about. And tell us what you think these things are going to auction off for. Tell us what you think about our comments. Tell us what you think about, uh, you know, what we think <laughs> about these cars. Are we crazy? Are we nuts? Are we right? Are we wrong? We've got, I, you know, I love going back and looking at the comments and seeing some of the things that people tell us about these cars. You know, sometimes we talk about a car that I think I know everything about and find out, nope, uh, there's another new nugget that I didn't learn about. So um, this is Jay, this is really fun. Yeah. We don't need an audience to tell us. We are crazy. We are nuts. And we don't know what we're talking about. We do I, not I, know what we're yeah. talking about. Don't take yeah. our... Uh, <laughs> predictions to the bank uh, unless yeah. you want to lose money um, <laughs> all right well yeah let's go ahead and talk about today's cars what do we got what's first on the all block? right let's talk up let's talk about our star car of the day mm. that we christened and that is the 1991 toyota land cruiser yes. bj bj 73 4x4 that is on cars and bids this car is offered to you out of hold Chicago. on we got it we got to mention that this was a audience suggestion oh, this was yeah. from our friend zach Lindsay in monroe washington he reached out to us uh, and what's said, up hey, zach? what do you think of this thing zach thanks for reaching out and thanks for uh petitioning or nominating this car these are really cool i have to say you know one of the coolest things about uh, doing the show with you is how much i've learned about these sort of like what I always thought were kind of like gray market four by fours, like the early G wagons and these early land cruisers, um, because I grew up in San Francisco and we just never saw cars like this. There's there's no lakes, there's no rivers, <laughs> there's no mountains in San Francisco. We had a lot of hills and a lot of fog, but not a lot of four by fours. So this is all new to me. Uh, One hundred seven thousand miles on the odometer on this car. I believe it's a, believe it or not, JP, a VW sourced two and a half liter inline four turbo diesel drivetrain that is driven by, of course, a five speed manual. Um, just by the looks of this and uh, reading the equipment, I would suggest that this car would literally go anywhere. Um, you are a snorkel away from probably fording rivers up to like 36, 40 inches with this thing. It's really, <laughs> it's really awesome. Cloth interior, which I love. It looks to me like that, um, white plastic hard top is removable um jp correct me if i'm wrong does it come with a convertible top as well i mean it's this is really neat looking uh i don't believe that it does i think it just looks it goes, like it yeah it's just built as a separate part but i've never seen one with the room i i think they do make them with a removable roof but this one does not have that oh on. man I yeah, it's not like sure a defender where you could pull it off yeah well yeah then i i I couldn't stand having it in white if it didn't come off. So I would paint it to match the rest of the car. But other than that, I love everything about this vehicle, uh, including the price, because this little bad boy, uh, JP, is sitting at just uh, 13500 on 20 bids, right? Is Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, yeah. It's, this is, this is a, a pretty spanking deal for a diesel. 14, so it's at $14,000 now on 23 bids. Um, there is a reserve, but uh, the car was imported. I should mention uh, the car was imported uh, from Spain, from Sevilla, down in southern Spain, um, or as Americans would read it, Seville. Um, <laughs> but this is from Spain. It was imported in 2020. It is on the U.S. title, and there you go. Yeah, buddy. Um, you know, we talked about a Zuzu Trooper the other day, one of the nicest ones uh, that we've seen in a long time. Uh, and, you know, this is one of those vehicles that kind of conforms to that. There is kind of the sweet spot of utilitarian boxy style uh, uh -huh. square design that, uh, you know, the Jeep Wrangler, the G-Wagon and the Defender have kind of like owned that space in America. No other vehicle, no other designer has really brought something like that to America. And the ones that did uh, have been rewarded for it. And you look at this Toyota and there it is. Oh. It has 
all of that and more. Um, so, you know, why didn't they bring them? That's the thing. They never brought this to America. So you got to bring one in. Um, I think if they did, if they had, it probably would have been, it would have been a big success, but it would have been kind of a cannibal uh, as well. So, you know, it would have been difficult for Toyota to figure out how to market this against their own things. Um, right. That said, I, yeah. And the other thing too, is that this is left-hand drive. So many, yeah. you see a lot of stuff like this all over the world by other manufacturers, the Nissan Patrol and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. But most of those are right hand drive vehicles so it's like right. to find something like this that you could actually drive around and feel normal and not you know accidentally take a left when you're supposed to take a right um <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, temporary dyslexia you know, this thing is awesome and look at jp look at the money this is at right now i would look at the what i would the money that this is going to mm-hmm. bring, I would 10 times rather have this than that Isuzu Trooper. Like it's not, well, and it's, it's 10 yeah. times the vehicle. Um, there's no sure. doubt about it. So I, yeah. yeah, I mean, and how much did that stupid Isuzu go for? Well, like I can't remember, but like, it was like 16, 15 grand, grand, 16 yeah, grand, which was just money. stupid, yeah. stupid. You yeah. know, that was an automatic and it was an Isuzu. This is a freaking Toyota. This is, a and with, thing, with relatively low miles and it's a diesel. Oh, yeah. I mean, this will oh, outlive yeah. the cockroaches after the apocalypse, uh, that totally. I'm sure is coming. Um, so here it is. Uh, do you got a bid on this thing? I think it's going to bring 24,000 bucks. Wow. Okay. Um, I think that would be really high. I don't think that's. I, I, I agree. I would, yeah, I agree. But look how clean this one is, and it's it's so turbo diesel. I I just you know if it was a gas one, eighteen thousand, mm-hmm. but turbo diesel, I think somebody's going to pay a premium for it, and it's here. I uh, you just can't find it. The other thing is, I also thought when I put my bid down, I also thought it was a convertible, which I thought was mm-hmm. the coolest thing ever. Mm-hmm. But so maybe I'm wrong. You can be under and have this one, but I I I wouldn't be surprised if it brought twenty four thousand bucks. I, I would sure like to see it bring. To, it, it God, I mean, it deserves to. Uh, it certainly deserves to bring more than that uh, Isuzu Trooper. But yeah, I'm definitely going to go lower and go. Uh, I, I'm going to be well. I mean it. It could break 20. Let me say, I mean, again, it's a platform thing. Um, yeah. Land cruisers have typically done very well on cars and bids. There have been a lot of them, but something yep. like this, I th- still think is more of a BAT play. This no. car should be, you know, I mean, breaking 20, they just don't go for that much, which is weird. This is so right? much better than a two door G wagon, even though those yeah. go for 80, you know, um, Boy, yeah, uh, I love this vehicle. I hope my buddy Zach buys it, and I hope he gets it oh. cheap. But I think it'll go twenty-one. Uh, twenty-one. I think that's All that's right. the premium on this. Okay, that's a, and that's a, and I think that's a really good bid. All right, let's stay on cars and bids, JP, and okay. jump over and look at this uh, twenty sixteen Volkswagen Golf R. I should mention hmm. right off the bat that um, uh, while this car is being sold by a private party. It is offered out of Onta- Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, which is going to be... always pick these Canadian cars. What is the I, deal with that? I think I always forget that they're in Canada. And, uh, and yeah. Do you, I, you have know, maple leaves in your mm, blood? Did you have do, syrup for breakfast I, with your I pancakes? Love, I love syrup. I do yeah. love syrup. I am yeah, a sugar... <laughs> Sugar's a problem for me. Uh, this car is is sick because uh, these are all-wheel drive, two-liter turbocharged fours. This one has a six-speed manual. It's not the dual-clutch transmission, uh, which I like. I think our friend Ben has this same generation. Professor approved. Our- yes, yes. In the same color, right, JB? Isn't his black? Yep. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, this car has just 38,400 miles on it. Uh, no stories, uh, no no problems with this car. Uh, the modifications are uh, OEM alloy wheels. Uh, he's got uh, fro. He's got some like ice zero tires for uh, driving the car year round in uh, Ottawa. Um, and the flaws, uh, I think that like the garage door hit the roof, so they repainted the roof of the car. I who cares? Like whatever. I no big deal. Right. Other than that, it's just some regular wear and tear as you would expect on a young forty thousand mile car. Bringing a car this young into the United States, I should just caution the audience, is a massive pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the likely buyer for this car is in Canada. Um, and if this car were to come to the United States, you'd have to concede, you know, whatever the car book value is, you've got to take six to $8,000 off of that because that's how much money you'd have to spend to bring this car across the border and have it, you know, federalized for the United States. So th- this is this was a poor pick by me. I apologize. I didn't notice right away that it was from Canada, but it's still a really cool car, and I love these things. You know, Ben's car is awesome, mm-hmm. and these are year-round cars anywhere you live in the U.S., which makes them very attractable, like you know, very reliable, you know, year-round sporty, fun to drive 
daily driver. I mean, these yeah. are great cars, and I can't say enough nice things about it. So there here's, you go. What do you, here's some video take? from the owner driving around the snow. I mean, it's all-wheel yeah. drive, so it's like, yeah. you know, it's a, like an Audi hatchback. I mean, look, this car under warranty is probably the best car you can get uh, for all things right there's right. there's cars that are there are better sports cars there are better wagons there are better crossovers there are better um off-roader vehicles there are better convertibles there's better all kinds of things right but there's this is one car the, the phrase one car to do it all yep. really it does apply here i mean i look Ben, he does. He's famous for uh, taking 50, 60 people out on uh, the Angels Crest, uh, yep. you know, in LA and doing what we everyone knows as the Professor Run. And those are yep. some of the best drives of the year. Um, he always scouts his right now. He has I don't know how many 911 or how many Porsches he has at any given time, but his daily driver is one of these, you know. And yep. he drives in LA traffic when there was LA traffic, um, and you know he he's got a family, he puts a kid yep. in the back, and everybody can just pile into this thing and go. Um, I, heck, I remember one time we had to go down to Benton's uh, <laughs> for an open house during uh, you know that was last year for what was that? That was for uh, Phoenix Club weekend, right? And yep. you and me and yep. uh kevin yep. and ben yep. none of which are small human beings um a thousand I'm, pounds a yeah thousand pounds of porsche fanatics dude in a yeah. volkswagen golf bar and then we went to a jack-in-the-box or a carl's jr yeah and yeah, just roached brutal. out oh man yeah. so then the ride you know, back it was, like, was tough it was like a thousand two hundred pounds on the ride back you know yeah yeah <laughs> but ben will be the first to tell you that he is quite happy to have bought that car new with a warranty because he yeah. has used it over and over and over again and and as it gets near the end of the warranty, uh, he's starting to get a little nervous. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's sitting at 15 grand, 12 bids, just a half hour to go. Where do you think know, this man. thing's going to uh, – how many miles does it have on it again? 38,000. Yeah, you know. And it's four going on five years old. So I get this car, across the – there's this you can find these in your country. <laughs> well, that's the problem, right? Yeah. So you could find this same car with the same mileage in the United States coming out of warranty uh, per, probably right around 30 grand. Yeah. So if you figure it's going to cost seven or $8,000 to get it here, that brings your bid down to 22. And then I think that just scares most people off anyway. So I'm going to go – I don't know, $21,000 as my bid. And I'm not confident that it even sells there. So what do you know? Yeah, I think this hey. thing stalls out. I don't think it gets more than, you know, honestly, if it gets up to 16, I'll be shocked. I'll bid uh, 17, five. Oh, I, I just don't think anybody, s- I don't think anybody does it. Yeah. I think you're right. So anyways, cool yeah. car though. Yeah. Sorry, very, 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 very nice car. Wrong place. Yeah. Wrong time. Wrong right, platform. So- so here's a fun one for the audience. We're going to jump over to bring a trailer now and look at a 1990 Porsche 911 mm. C2. This is a black on black 964. This is a Polnick special if <laughs> ever there was Come one. On now. Look at that car. That just screams JP. I know a guy that would want that car and mm-hmm. he's on the other line. Mm-hmm. Um, Polnick, party of one. Your Porsche's mm-hmm. ready. Mm-hmm. This car is awesome. And I'll, uh, to tell our audience how awesome it is, you and I both blindly put this in the notes. We both picked this car today, which yeah. is really funny. I had to erase it. We had six cars lined up because we picked this car <laughs> twice. <laughs> so, JP, explain to me why out of – let me read my notes to you. Hello, hello, hello. Out of Hopkins, Minnesota. With Minnesota. Just, with just 37,000 miles, this manual transmission, two-wheel drive, C2 is sitting at just – $55,555 with an uh, basically two hours to go. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. This, you know, I know that they did some paint work on one side of the car, but the paint, all of the painted panels measure in the nines, which means they did an excellent job painting this car. It doesn't appear that there's filler. It just looks like there must have been a scratch or a key mark or something, and they just, they, they, I don't know. I, I'm speculating here. Uh, I don't know what's wrong, but the poor looks fantastic. Other than that, this car is no stories. This is a fantastic car, and they are really popular right now. In my mind, this should be an $85,000 car. And judging by the tea leaves, this car is either going to have one of the wildest late rallies we've seen in a while, or we're missing something. I'm missing something. Tell me what's going on, JP. What's happening? Uh, I, I think 
uh, it's going to happen. I mean, it's, I mean, bring a trailer is notorious for late rallies, especially on, on special cars. I mean, look at that Mercedes, uh, yesterday, yeah. the, what was it? The right. 280 SE, what was that thing? SE. Yeah. 280 SE. SE, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was sitting around 130 and then shot up to 180. I mean, that's, or 195. So, I mean, yeah. what percentage from where it was three hours to where it ended, yeah. uh, how far, how, I, I think the percentage going from there to where it landed is far less less than this one going from 55 to somewhere in the eighties, which is where it belongs. Um, yeah, I, I think just people are sitting around waiting. I think people that want this car, everyone knows that everyone wants this car because this is about as blue chip as you get. And, uh, everyone's waiting to the last minute to see who actually has the stones to put the money in there. Um, but yeah, this, this, this is where it's at unless, and you know, granted, I haven't really gotten into this ad. I haven't read the comments unless there's something that someone's discovered. This car is the bee's knees, baby. Um, you know, I mean, black on black C2, the only thing that would make it more valuable would be if it were a, you know, was it a 93 or 94 with, so it went and had all the updates, but, um, yeah, you know. yeah. They, they they talk about the uh, what is it? The gasket, the gasketless, uh, yeah, transmission yeah, and the yeah, transmission and the, that, yeah. the clutch that's single mass versus dual mass, blah blah blah, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. if you you know what, and I, how much can we really say about nine six fours? This car is the one you want, just to pretty much. Oh my god, um, it's so awesome. The, uh, yeah, so at the photos of the inside, it reminds me of my RS America that we, uh, we yeah. lost on the mountain. Yeah, and I I tell you, man, I get like I, I feel it in my solar plexus. I'm like. Oh, I want a one six four so bad. Right, it's just it's so cool. It was such such a great car, JP. I was so happy with my RSA, and man, I miss that thing. I mean, and with this car, you put uh, a set of coilovers in here to put some KWV threes or Bielstein yep. PSS tens, and yep. a set of uh, Cup One wheels like what we're on was on your. Yep. Uh, car and yep. you are yep. good to go does this one did you check the uh did it have a lsd or is this it a, does it, it does. does oh my gosh yeah. i mean yeah come Limited on slip differential absolutely yeah, yeah that is the it, car it, it's on the bid sheet the, what's the your owner, bid literally yeah I, so i had kind of you know again because the car hadn't really moved uh, there hasn't mm-hmm. been a lot of action since i nominated it on sunday or whatever and put it down as something we would review it hasn't had a ton of action it's sitting on just nine nine bids and so i was like is this car gonna go for 79 but man i just look at it again this morning i was reading over it and talking to you about it i get ethered up i'm gonna go eighty four thousand dollars and force yeah. you to bid either the over or the under yeah i'm going over on that one i'm gonna say 85 i'm gonna get i'm gonna stay tight with you uh yeah. i'm not gonna give you a big spread it. because i know we both know this is an 80 something thousand yeah. dollar car and it's really at this point all about who's in the room uh, not necessarily yeah. what it's technically worth and what it's worth is what happens when, in, when you're in the yeah. room. So yeah, uh, definitely want this car. Uh, so, you know, go get it, Michael Deeb. Oh, it's in your neck man. of the woods, right? Ooh, I wish, I wish, I wish. Yeah. Minnesota <laughs> on our way, on our way home from Wyoming, we'll just swing around yeah. Minnesota and pick it up. Yeah. In case we don't buy anything in Wyoming. All right. Let's uh, keep you with the theme of absolutely weird selections today. Um, I picked this just, this was really intrigued me. Uh, D. Tommaso Panteras have been on the move, and this car on Bring a Trailer is a 1974 D. Tommaso Pantera project. What's interesting, JP, is this car has been sitting in a museum for like, I don't know, let's say 15 years. And it was one of those um, didn't ran when parked. <laughs> like the motor of this uh, something weird, they parked it, rolled it into a museum, and it sat there ever since. So this car is being sold, and the seller, uh, one of the bidders this morning asked like a litany of questions, like seven questions, and the seller went online, rewrote all of the questions, and put the answers, and all of his answers are no, unknown, 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 oh. unknown, <laughs> no, not at all, hey, You got to give the guy and some points for honesty. I'm like, fuck, I mean, like, jeez, dude, like, why are you even bothering? Like, it's, it's just insane. I, I mean... Like he can't answer any questions pertaining to the mechanical condition, uh, ability of this as a project <laughs> car. That being said, the whole reason why this is interesting is that Pantera's have jumped from like forty-five to sixty thousand dollar cars to now eighty-five to hundred thousand dollar cars. This one's sitting at forty-five thousand, and it's on ten thousand original miles. 
everything cosmetically on this car looks like it's brand spanking new. But the brakes have seized, so the thing's sitting on roller dollies, and the motor <laughs> gave out before they parked it. And then the guy who's selling it has no idea what happened before he decided to list it for sale. So this is like, you know, it's like these guys, JP, when they buy um, – when they bid to buy uh, storage units and you're like, well, let's see what's inside. Oh my you know, gosh, like, that's funny. Like, yeah. you know, this, this could be as easy as flushing the fluids and putting a battery in it and, and getting the brakes to work. You know, that's, there's an outside chance you get this car running for 2000, 2500 bucks. This car might need a full tear down. I don't know. It's a 351 Cleveland, which is a Mustang motor from the early seventies. Um, also should, available in the country squire. Yeah. Should be a pretty easy motor to rebuild without, incurring a ton of expense but that's a completely different project if you're rebuilding the motor so anyways there you go a, a gamble of sorts but a almost brand new di tomaso pantera uh, these cars jp are famous for being fast and fun but uh where people want to drive them in nevada because the roads are long and straight and you can get away with doing 130 miles an hour these cars are notorious for overheating. Mm. So um, it's a mixed bag with these Panteras. You know, they're not great Angel's Crest cars because they're big. They don't steer that well. Uh, but you bring one out to uh, Nevada and you can go really fast. You just can't do it in the summer because you'll blow a gasket. So anyway, there you go. Team Muscle Pantera for those willing to gamble. Calling Van Halen. I mean, this just has like uh-huh. upside down <laughs> cross earring uh, written all yeah. over it. I mean, I think uh, must have mullet to drive uh, yes. is really what needs to be written on the door. Uh, yeah, and in this kind of crazy yellow, canary yellow color too. It's uh-huh. just all the flashy and all the muscle car and all the butt rock you can get in one uh, four <laughs> wheel package. Uh, it's not for me. I have never really been a fan of these uh, because a lot of the reasons you you know you talk about the straight line yeah. thing, whatever. They're neat. Yeah. Um, I certainly wouldn't be the one taking the risk. Uh, I yeah, you got a bid for this thing three and a half hours ago at forty five grand. Man, sexy Italian build Ford Mustang. You know Detroit muscle. I it, this these cars. I've just always thought they were kind of cool. Um, I know they don't handle, but some there's some weird redneck thing inside of me that wants one <laughs> at some point um i i, I don't but, own but a deep t-shirt. don't you if you're gonna it, yeah if you're gonna break out the twisted t- sister t-shirt uh <laughs> and rock a muscle car don't you want to look like you're in a muscle car this that's the problem yeah. with this car is that it yeah. doesn't look like a muscle car it looks like an italian yeah. you know yeah. mid-engine sports car that you can go around corners I, if i'm gonna be a, 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 yeah I if agree. i'm joe a, dirt i want to you know being a Mustang yeah. or a Camaro or something. Oh, I And I'm a Mustang guy. I, a Wimbledon white GT350 Shelby Cobra with Viking blue racing stripes is the ultimate car to me from the United States. I think that's the greatest car America ever made. Mm. Um, that being said, I can't afford a 65. So I'd much probably more likely get a bullet replica, especially since I own a restaurant that's across the street from his house in the movie. Mm. Um, so it would be really cool to have a bullet and park it literally on the street <laughs> in front of the place yeah where we're and i mean this yeah, we've, yeah. Owned, we've owned the restaurant for 31 years ford fans park their cars in front of that house and take photos of it. and i'm the only one that knows that the reason why the guy is taking a picture of that weird apartment building is because it was in steve mcqueen's movie so it'd be no hilarious kidding. to have a, a bullet replica parked out there and people would lose their mind like is he home <laughs> why haven't you done that that just seems like uh, you know that's something, bought, that's something that goes on the star map everyone I, you know let's go I see bought, the fisherman's wharf and the guy with a bullet in front of his restaurant yeah, <laughs> in front of yeah so yeah. I, I when the 01 bullet came out ford mm. did the press release the junket was at fog city diner mm. and they gave people a map of the route of the chase scene and mm. so all these press guys were driving mustangs by the house and taking photos of it in front of the house of course i bought one of the old one mustangs and rocked it for a couple of years spent eight thousand dollars on the suspension and made that car handle which was nice. really fun anyways i digress this uh 74 uh di tomaso project car is likely going to break fifty thousand dollars um but maybe not as much as i originally thought i put 56 i'm going to drop it down to 
fifty-one thousand bucks and say it sells at that price. Mm, boy, gosh, that that makes it hard on me because I don't see a ton of action late on this thing. Um, and but that's only you know six grand more than it's sitting at right now with three and a half hours ago. So I, with the action that it has had, it has a little bit of action, twenty-five bids already. I, I am gonna have to go the over and go fifty-two. Uh, there that's you a go. pure guess. I mean, yeah, geez, this yeah. thing. I mean, I guess might, the thing is, I don't love these, but I know people do. And somebody yep. wants this car and it looks like a great start and you could potentially get a bargain. I live in Vegas. Let's roll the dice, right? Come oh on. yeah. 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 Right. I, you might get a full whiteout today. This could be your first day where you win every single know. one. I don't know. All right, JP, I think we're on our last car. Okay. Uh, <laughs> John, another <laughs> Palmix special, another 91, uh, uh, another 91 Porsche 911 Carrera 2 Cabriolet Project. I don't know if I want my name attached to this Back as to, special, but... Uh, you picked this pile of crap. I mean, this thing is a Frankenstein if ever there was one. Yeah. L- look at this car. <laughs> this is so awkward looking to me. I don't know what it is. It's just so funny to see those small bumpers and a convertible top. I it, it's, it's like, it's if a big jaw ran up to you, jumped up onto your chest and started meowing. You know, you're like, what the yeah. f- is that going on? Well, I think you need to let everybody know that this is a 964. Somebody backdated yeah. a convertible 964. Uh, yeah. And this is a project car. This is this yeah. doesn't even, I don't even think this has an engine, does it? I don't even think so. No, it, and with that front end, it looks like mm-hmm. a 73, nine, excuse me, a 73 911. Chrome mirrors, chrome uh, headlight bezels, chrome door handles. Uh, and, and and that sort of slender looking a pillar windshield mm-hmm. they did a pretty faithful job of making it look like an early car um i'm you know that i think the fuchs need to have a little bit deeper dish for them to for your eyes to really just sort of glaze over them and just naturally say they're fuchs instead i just look at them and i go are those fuchs um but the convertible top and the red interior i mean this thing is hilarious and uh and yeah, I don't know. It, the, the chassis itself is a salvage title. Um, but again, what are you buying here? You're buying a project car. So I don't think that's really going to hold anybody up. But it's worth mentioning because it is what it is. Um, this car is also out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So we did it again. So, mm. uh, you know, you're talking about a project car with no drivetrain. You're talking about a Canadian car. You're talking about a salvage title. And you're talking about $12,000 on 12 bid. So I don't JP. Did, Tell us what you see here when you pick this this Frankenstein. Well, you know, I see a conversation, and that's about it. I mean, you got to admit that uh, Singer starts with 964s or yep. you know, 993s if they can, and they backdate them. And, yes, it's a convertible, so that is an issue. And you could look at this interior. I mean, they're going for Singer. They're, they picked the lobster color interior for a reason. Right. Look at that gear shift yeah. lever uh, yeah. boot. Uh, you know, I, I actually have these same track mats in my 993. They've got that red <laughs> dash card. Uh, look, it you know, it would have been nice if it was a black dashboard, but th- this car, I think, actually does have some potential because it is independent, you know, corners uh, when it comes uh-huh. to suspension. So you can throw coilovers right. in this thing and make something out of yep. it. Um, you know, they never made a convertible, uh, you know, long hood. We both know that. Um, and I right. think... Uh, you know, I've actually been exploring the idea with my nine th- nine three of converting it into a Targa. Um, and uh, oh I think God. if ever there were a car to convert into a Targa, it's this. You get rid of the yeah. convertible top and you put the convertible ho- or you put the Targa hoop on hoop. it with yep. the glass. They fit. It's the same. It's the same tub. Uh, you have to right. do a bunch of reinforcement to make sure it's you know worthy. But the good thing is you don't have to replace the doors at that point. And uh, you know right. the the hard part though is that the nine six four window frame has motors up there in the top of the frame so there's a motor here and there's a motor here when that top comes down uh it automatically clamps down into it uh so chances are you'd probably have to replace the top of uh you'd have to replace the top of the window frame uh in order to affix a targa bar you know the actual not the bar but the top itself um but if you made this into a targa uh, a long hood Targa project or, uh, you know, project with, uh, yeah. you know, throw a, a hot three, six in there or something like that. And then you've got Ooh. independent suspension, you know, you bag on the wheels a little bit. And I, I, at first glance, I kind of agree with you, but you know, there's no weight in this car. So it's got, it's basically just when, when the car sits down on top of those wheels, I think right, it's going to make, it's going to make everything yeah. look better. You're, uh, and you're spot on. I, 
I love your idea of the target thing because yeah. this, this car, you know, again, if you put the 964 drivetrain in here, this car looks dangerous to me for whatever reason. It just doesn't look mm. so flimsy. There's no A-frame and there's no roll hoop. So, I mean, you'd have to just putt in yeah, this but, car. You couldn't, yeah, well, you hold couldn't, on, though. Hold yeah. on. I mean, hold on. A 964 yeah. convertible. This is a 964 convertible. It's not yeah. an old 911. So it was built reinforced uh, yeah. for the fact that, that it doesn't have the loop. I mean, 993s and right. 964s convertibles are pretty relatively rigid. Um, especially right. with just a little bit of work. So I don't think this thing's fair, crazy. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, the idea of a tar bar as, as, you know, like an acting roll hoop, that yeah. to me, I think it would look better and I think it would, I think it would drive better. It would be structurally yeah. more rigid as well. Yeah. And I, again, I'm not bagging on the 964 as a platform. It's it's fantastic for, for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, they, they, you're right. There is a lot of potential. And at $13,000, it could be potential realized in the United States. So let's see if somebody, uh, we see well, this car. Well, I mean, let's figure it out. Dump. I mean, thir- you go 13 grand uh, for the, yeah. l- let's say, let's say this thing goes for a little bit more. It's under 20. Uh, it's going to cost you at least 20 grand for a for a good power more yeah i mean yeah, an yeah, engine yeah, and transmission need a transmission yeah. too and the wiring harnesses all that stuff you're looking at thirty thousand yeah. dollars now you're right. basically looking at 50 grand for a backdated convertible 964 yeah. that doesn't pencil out uh yeah, that's kind of weird now to do the target transformation um you know you're probably looking at a minimum 10 to twenty thousand right. dollars to do that you know you're really quickly up there in the seventy thousand dollar range now that is uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars less than a singer. Um, yeah. and you probably have something really special at that point, $70,000. Yeah. You're not getting a backdated nine, six, four, uh, you know, target. Yeah. That's not happening. So yeah. for it, someone it, that has should... the time and the inclination, this is a Dwayne wick type of thing, but this yeah. isn't his sensibility. So I don't think he'd ever do it. Right. And, and we should stop comparing it to singer because the, the yeah. quality is not going to be there, yeah. but to have something unique built on a 96 platform is the similarity and it ends there. Yeah. So the question is, it, you know, when you look at a 964 two wheel drive convertible, um, you can pick one up. I mean, you can pick a miler up for like 35 to 40,000. Yeah. You can pick um, a nice one up for 45 to 50. Mm-hmm. If you go of, above 50, then you start looking at 993 convertibles for 55 to 60. You can get a really nice 993 convertible, which is a phenomenal bargain, by the way. Um, yeah. uh, so you know, if you're in this car, seventy thousand does that does that justify the premium? In other words, would somebody want something that's that unique and pay that you know thirty to fifty percent premium over a, a regular used nine six four convertible? I think the answer is yes. I think somebody would pay yeah. that, yeah. but that's a gamble. So you have to love the project because you might be stuck with it from a financial standpoint. Yeah, I mean, it, this is going to take someone with real vision to be able to take the gamble on this. Uh, you know, also someone that might have an engine already. You know, there there are yeah. a lot of guys out there that have the pieces ready to go into something like this, and they're just waiting sure. for the right place to put it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, would have been cool. Uh, but, uh, all right, well, there you go. I mean, that's why I brought it up. It is weird as heck. Uh, yeah. it, is a, it is a long game getting this car. you got a lot of work to do before this ever sees uh, the Angelus crowd. Uh, yeah. or you know photographer's lens on the road so what's your bid 13.5 right now f- over four hours to go and has it had any action at all 16 bits mm, eh. no not really eighteen thousand dollars jp and you think it gets at, the eye at 20 at 20 it, it it doesn't start to pencil i don't think because yeah. it needs so much so i put eighteen thousand, and that's generous but it's only because the fit and finish of what's there it looks good i like everything on the car except the convertible top itself the way yeah. it sits uh d- it it's and so when you said the target thing i hadn't thought that renewed my interest in the potentiality of this car that being said i don't think somebody's going to do it but anyway here you go 18 grand yeah and yeah i mean very very few people have considered the idea of putting uh, yeah i just don't hear people talking about that but okay you know yeah gosh that's tough because is it going to break 18 is it going to get up to 20 or is it just going to stall out do i i'm gonna go this is a toy coin toss which way am i gonna go michael (laughs) deeb i'm gonna go a thousand dollars under and i'm gonna go always go under yeah i think this one's gonna stall out And, and that really hurt me the other day i went under on everything and everything went over. So um, was, maybe there's some was, dreamers today that are going to make you, uh, to give you some love. So today was the day though for you to do that. So mm, I, I wouldn't be surprised mm, if you won them all today. But anyway, mm, that's it. That's the yeah. show, JP. 
That's how the bid nerds, uh, that's how it works here at bid nerds. We, uh, we, we calls them like we sees them. <laughs> and we're never right uh all right well there it is uh thanks guys make sure you subscribe like hit that notification button if you like the show or even if you hate the show make comments uh give us the thumbs up thumbs down all those things help us out uh let people know that this show exists we're just starting out and we're just getting uh we're getting rolling we love having yeah. you guys watching we really appreciate everyone that's out there we're gonna get some swag made soon start doing some prizes uh this is i'm john polnick in las vegas along with my partner michael deeb in in San Francisco. Uh, we say thank you for watching and make sure you tune in tomorrow at around the nine o'clock hour for the last bid nerds of the week. We've got some yep. really special cars coming tomorrow. Is, is Alcantara going to be on with us? We shall see. We might have a, we might have a third nerd. So nerd, you'll have yeah. to tune in to find so. out. Thanks yeah. for hanging out guys. Thanks, see you tomorrow. Thanks Zach. Thanks Zach for the nomination. Oh too, yeah. Very good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. See ya.